interview donc de la chasse. Here plaisir we de are for the interview Vindeberg. for Merci the Thomas hunt. Uh, thank you, Mats Thomas Vinterberg and Matt Mikkelsen. Tous les deux. Thomas Vinterberg. Alors, speak in the mic. So, délicat, why such a difficult uh, subject, uh, the reverse of Festen in a way? Well, for me, the subject of this movie uh, gives me the opportunity to tell a love story between a lot of people. A very strong friend relationship, very friendly and strong relationship between a man and a girl, and about fatherhood, and about this village, and about the loss of innocence in, in, in this village, village and in, in society in some way. So, um, for me, it was not a difficult subject, but a very interesting subject. Pourquoi avoir choisi Mats Why did you choose Mads Mikkelsen to play a school teacher who's uh, in a kindergarten? That's not the kind of role you imagined for him. Why did you choose that actor? Well, first of all, Mads Mikkelsen is a, a fabulous actor in any way, in many ways, and I understand why he's been doing it so well and why he's become a hu huge star. He's uh, absolutely giving and fantastic to work with, mm -hmm. and I've always looked forward to work with him one day. Mm -hmm. um, the choice of making Mass a school teacher and a typical castrated Danish uh, Scandinavian man was interesting because he's so beautiful and because he is so much the opposite, and we both found that it gave some resonance to, to, to the character. Uh, also, it gives the character a possibility of arising to become a real man at the end. Um, so yeah, it was it was a joy ride. <laughs> and Mats, uh, how did you uh, approach this role? Were you surprised uh, that uh, Thomas would ask you to play this? He, you, are you the um, perfect Scandinavian man? How do you see your character? <laughs> well, the, the, the perfect Scandinavian man, I don't know about that. Uh, I think we're a mix of a lot of things in Scandinavia, uh, but there is a tendency that we have changed into the slightly softer over the last couple of decades, I guess. And uh, and this is not necessarily a typical man. If if I was if I was him, this film would be 10 minutes long. Uh, fortunately, I'm not. Uh, he has difficulties saying stop, saying no, uh, and that is his personal journey. It's not the it's not the film's journey, but that is his personal journey. No, I was not surprised. Uh, Thomas uh, gave me the script and he approached me. We'd known each other since way back. But in those days, he had this little club, the Winterberg Club, and I was in a different club. They were, when we were young, we needed to have clubs. <laughs> and now we become slightly older, we open up a little, start working with each other, and uh, I'm just so really, really pleased that uh, they offered me the part. So you're talking about two families of Danish cinema when you talk about clubs, so when Thomas chooses Mats uh, for this film? I think there was like 50 little clubs. I think we all needed to uh, find our way of working and we needed to do that with certain people for a period to find our footings. And, uh, and as I said, when we got less childish and a little more adult, we started working with other people as well. My problem was always that he's too pretty. You know, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know what to do. I, I don't know what I didn't know what to do about it, and I, I tried to dress him down in this movie, but it didn't work out well. He's still very pretty, yeah. but uh, but older that's than okay. way older than you, and that's a good thing. <laughs> You said earlier, Thomas, that he becomes a man. We can, so he is accused uh, of a pedophile act by a little girl. And why doesn't he defend himself more? Matt said if it had been me in this role, it would have lasted 10 minutes. But is this a typically Scandinavian reaction? I think maybe it is a, t a typical Scandinavian reaction. I find it interesting that he insists on being a civilized human being, and he insists on justice. It's a stubborn, civilized, uh, just man. And that may be very typical Scandinavian. Uh, in some sense, there's an echo of my own life in it. Um, I, I got knocked down when I already were, when I was in kindergarten because I pursued justice once. I was in a, a, in a public bus with my father, and this big, big fat, and my sister, and this big fat man enters and tells my sister to leave. He wants the seat. And I got so angry and, and got so uh, irritated, and mm -hmm. I felt it was injustice. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I knocked the man's shoulder and I said, you're stupid. This guy gets up and knocks me down and he be, and was put in prison and the bus goes to the side and, and maybe there's a little bit of this uh, little stubborn boy in, in, in this character. I, I also believe that if you're accused with a thing like this, it doesn't matter what you say, everything will sound hollow. Yeah. It will sound as an excuse. Mm. It, it, I mean, even if it did it, I didn't do it, it will sound wrong. Uh, and for that reason, he's trying to, you know, not to be aggressive with it. He believes that it will be fixed. People love him, they will believe him. But the longer he waits, the less they believe him. Uh, I think it's not a necessarily Scandinavian thing. It's a, it's a very human thing. It's civilized, mm. right? And uh, people have asked me, why doesn't he leave? Well, that would prove them right, in some sense. Mm. He's, instead, of, instead of escaping this conflict, he's going to the heart of it. He's going to the church where everybody's gathered to prove that they're all wrong. I mean, this is his life. This is his home. These yeah. are his friends. Yeah. He allow he's allowed to be here. And that is, that is a very strange way, a combination of being stubborn and not, uh, and not being capable of saying no. But uh, civilization turned out to be a kind of trap. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, at some point in this uh, film, he, he steps out and does a very uncivilized thing, which is where people started clapping at the, the press conference yesterday, or at the press screening, uh, which is interesting for me, because it's kind of a relief, a catharsis, that when he lets go of civilization and steps into character as a, as a real man, people like that, yeah. which in, in a way is understandable. I would have done the same much before, but a little worrying, so to speak. It's true that at one time he reacts uh, by uh, very violently, and it's true that in the press screening yesterday the audience applauded. You give a fantastic performance, but you also have an amazing partner, this little girl. How did you work with a child on so delicate a topic? How did it go? Well, obviously we did not tell her everything about the film. Uh, we don't know who she is and where she's from, but mm. <laughs> we have never seen it before. Uh, her name is Annika, and uh, right. she's six years old. Uh, she did what she was asked to do, and a little more. And if I improvise, she followed me, and she changed the stuff. But mo most beautiful of all, when we finished the scenes, it didn't matter what kind of emotional scene it was, she would go over there in the corner and play with her mates. Uh, so she was absolutely fantastic, and uh, I've never seen anything like it. And no kids or animals were harmed in this movie. Comment on dirige Mats Mikkelsen? How do you direct uh, Mats Mikkelsen? Because directing a child is difficult because they have this disarming spontaneity. But an actor like Mats Mikkelsen, who comes from another school, as he said himself, how do you work with him? What kind of actor is he? Well, first of all, Mats and I uh, prepared a lot. We, we built the character together in conversation and in writing, and conversations again, rehearsals. Uh, the system I normally follow, and which I guess Mass do, does too, is, is to prepare and prepare and prepare to have sort of a foundation that is solid. And then when the camera switches on, you can let go. You can feel free and, and you, can, you can step into character, so to speak. Mass knows what to do. It's not difficult. And we didn't communicate with many words while shooting. No. He looks at me, I look at him, and we didn't have to say much. We knew if it was good or bad, or wanted to go this way or this way. And uh, he's such a trained man. So it, it, in that sense, it was absolutely wonderful. And I think, funny enough, uh, we did spend a lot of time preparing. And we changed a lot. Mm -hmm. But we changed the bag again. What we really needed to do was to put out the questions in the air and answer the questions. So we knew that this is what we're doing. So we did not change that much in the end. We just needed the questions out. And then when we got the answers, we knew what to do or had a fairly good idea. But he's just good. <laughs> it's that simple. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> That's absolutely true, this extraordinary scene in the church that uh, you mentioned. Uh, this is also a film about friendship and how you see your friends. Uh, thank you very much to both of you.